Hello everyone and welcome to part two of my guide on making planetary pictures with your telescope. In this part we're going to be looking at recording the planets with your phone camera as well as on tips and tricks with the setup and settings. I do want to give a small disclaimer that we are going to be using a much more beginner friendly setup, a setup that most people would have as they're starting. And we're not going to be producing images of this quality as you saw in the last part with the setup we have because I was using a 12 inch telescope and ZWO camera, both which are relatively expensive. With that being said, uh, let's get started with the guide. So for tonight's recording of the planets, I'm going to be using a very beginner friendly setup. It's going to consist of a Zoomel Z130 telescope. It's about a five inch Dapsonian. Then we're going to use a Zoomel Plasso 9 millimeter, a Celestron Omni 2X Barlow, and something that some beginners won't have is a phone mount for your telescope. I would very highly recommend getting this off Amazon for about $20 to $30. It's going to make capturing the planets much easier and way more quality than holding the phone up to your lens with your hand. And we're going to be using that for the rest of the video. So let's talk about three apps on your phone we will be using during our observing and recording sessions. The first is called Stellarium. This is an interactive star chart that has helped me a lot with determining planet positions and constellations. Um, it is available on the computer for free, but I would highly recommend checking out the mobile version, which is about $3. Uh, here's a quick demonstration of the mobile version. After opening the app, you can see that it's going to automatically change the time to night and show what is in the sky. I have the app currently looking in the southern direction, which is where the planets are currently for me in the northern hemisphere. I'm going to fast forward the time to see when Jupiter and Saturn rise. As you can see, they're starting to rise above the horizon. The best time to observe any object in the sky and thus image it is when they are at their highest point in the sky. For Jupiter and Saturn at this time, this is when they are directly above the southernmost point. At the time of this recording, that is at about 3 a.m. You can do a lot of things with Stellarium, so I encourage you to try the computer version first and consider downloading the paid mobile version. Now let's talk about Astrospheric. Astrospheric is an app that will let you check astronomy related weather for clouds, transparency, the seeing, temperature, and a lot more. It's available on the computer, but it's also on mobile for free. Here's a quick demonstration of the mobile app. Right when we open it up, we are presented with a lot of information, but we are going to look at the three bars in the middle. These bars represent clouds, transparency, and the seeing. For all these bars, the quality is represented by a light to dark shade of blue. The darker shades of blue are very good, while a lighter blue or even white represent bad conditions. The first bar, clouds, represents how cloudy it is at the time you select. If this bar isn't at least a modest shade of blue, then there will be a lot of clouds that makes observation impossible. The second bar, transparency, represents how well you will be able to see deep sky objects like galaxies and nebulae. This bar has little to no effect on planetary observation, so we can ignore this one for our imaging purposes. The last bar, seeing, represents the amount of detail that you can see on planets and other high magnification objects. This is the bar we care about the most when it comes to imaging, as a darker shade of blue will let us see the most detail on planets and give us a much better uh, image quality for our images. If the bar is filled with lighter shades of blue or white, then I won't even bother going to image that night. Our final app of discussion is the camera app. Now, there are a lot of good camera apps for Apple and Android from their respective stores, but I've chosen Pro Camera X as it is very simple to understand and is free. It is important that you get a camera app that will let you control at least the two most important factors to planetary imaging, ISO and exposure. ISO is going to control how sensitive your camera sensor is, and a higher ISO usually results in a higher amount of noise, so I like to keep the ISO relatively low. Exposure is going to control how much light hits your camera, I like to keep the exposure sort of high for planetary imaging compared to the ISO which I will keep at a lower amount. I've found that a higher exposure will let me capture more detail on the planets, while a lower ISO will help reduce noise. There are two more settings on here, focus and white balance. For focus, I keep that on the maximum value, infinity. Finally, white balance is left on auto as it will let me get the closest to true color from my recordings. All of these settings can be experimented with, and I encourage you to try new things every time you record. Next thing is to make sure your camera and eyepiece lenses are free from stains and fingerprints. You would think that using Windex and a paper towel would be a good solution, 
but the Windex contains chemicals that can damage the coating on your lenses and the paper towel can also leave scratches on it. So what I'd like to use instead is isopropyl rubbing alcohol. This is a 70% solution of alcohol and water. And make sure that the alcohol you use is just alcohol and water. You don't want any other chemicals in there. And to rub it clean, I would use a Q-tip or a cotton swab. This is a very soft material. It's not going to damage your lens. Just lightly put it inside the alcohol, dip it on the lens very softly. You don't need to use too much pressure. And afterwards, make sure to dry it off with the dry side of the Q-tip and get all the alcohol off as that will get all the oil and grease out. Another useful tip is to never blow on your eyepiece or lenses. This is because you'll get a lot of moisture on them from breathing on them. Instead, if you want to get a lot of the dust out, you can simply breathe in on the eyepiece or lens and that'll get the dust off just as well. An important thing to do before any observation or imaging session is to leave your telescope outside for at least 30 minutes. It can be a little bit longer or a little bit less. It depends on the size of your telescope. The reason you want to leave your telescope outside is so that it can adjust to the outside temperature. If you don't let it adjust to the outside temperature, then your images will be very distorted and undesirable. So as long as you let your telescope cool down outside for that amount of time period, then your images should turn out just fine. Finally, I want to briefly mention collimation. Collimation is the process of aligning all components in your telescope to bring light to its best focus. Every telescope needs to have good collimation for it to perform its best in observation and imaging. In this picture, you can see I have the telescope in decent collimation. The small black green is approximately in the center of the mirror, and the three mirror clips are evenly distributed. Most modern telescopes are easy to collimate with the proper tools and guides. I'm going to link some of these in the description, but two important tools to make your collimation smooth are a Cheshire eyepiece and a laser collimator. These two will make collimating your primary and secondary mirror much easier. Now I'm going to attach my Google Pixel 4 to the phone mount. First thing is to slide the phone into the mount and tighten this screw until it is stable and the phone will come out of the mount. There we go, perfect. Now we just need to loosen this screw in the back so I can adjust the camera side of the mount until the camera is approximately centered right there. Right about there, that's perfect. Then we just tighten this screw. And once we're done with that, the phone mount is ready to be inserted into the eyepieces. Now we just need to attach the mount to the eyepiece and this part is quite simple. Just put the eyepiece up to the camera and tighten the top screw until it is nice and snug. And once we have done that, we're ready to move on to our final step. Finally, I'm going to open the camera app on my phone. This is going to let me adjust the back screw of my phone mount so I can center the phone's camera on the eyepiece lens. Adjusting the camera until it is centered on the eyepiece will take some time, so I recommend doing this inside with the light source. You will want to avoid the dark spots on the edge of your camera and try to get the view as close to a white circle as you can. After you have this white circle, you can tighten the screw in the back and this will keep it centered. This is an example of a well-centered camera on the eyepiece. Alright, so now it is time to record the planets. It's about 2 in the morning. Jupiter and Saturn are quite high up in the sky. This is the Zoom LZ-130. And this is my 12-inch telescope. We won't be using this tonight, we're using this. So I'll meet you guys back with the recording session. After putting the complete eyepiece setup in the telescope, I turned it towards Jupiter and started the camera app. As you can see, Jupiter is currently overexposed. I keep the ISO high at first as it will help me find the planet on my phone screen when I'm using the finder scope. After I have the planet centered, I'm going to lower the ISO to a low amount. For Jupiter, I usually use the lowest ISO possible, which is 55 for this camera app. Next, I am showing what adjusting the focus looks like. I zoom in with the camera app to make Jupiter bigger so I can see the details easier. Using the focuser on the telescope while using the phone screen at the same time is tricky with all the shaking, but you want to get as close to perfect focus as you can. Then I'm adjusting the exposure for my final setting. I like to use low ISO and an exposure setting that will make the planet somewhat bright but not overexposed. If the exposure is too low, then you will drastically reduce the detail and create lots of noise too much exposure and you will end up with no detail besides an overexposed white sphere. You will have to find a good middle ground, which for this recording was at about 1 and 175th of a second. Now I'm going to switch to video mode and start recording Jupiter. 
I make sure to adjust the telescope so that Jupiter will have the longest time to drift across the screen without it being too close to the edge of the eyepiece. Starting too close to the edge will make the image distort, so avoid that. After Jupiter gets close to the opposite edge of the screen, I will pause the video. This is really important because if Jupiter drifts off the screen, it could mess the software later on. After pausing the video, I will readjust the telescope so Jupiter is back in its original position and resume the video. You can repeat this process a few times. For this recording, I decided to only do about two minutes, which was about three loops. After this final loop, I will end the video and we have our Jupiter recording. Now I am going to do a Saturn recording. Because I adjusted the focus earlier for Jupiter, we shouldn't have to change it for Saturn. Since Saturn is a lot dimmer than Jupiter, I need to bump up the ISO and exposure. Just a slightly higher ISO will work, but I make the exposure moderately higher. I start the recording and do the exact same thing as the Jupiter video. Start with Saturn close to the edge and let it drift to the other side. Then pause the recording and resume it after returning Saturn to the original position. After I'm done with the Saturn recording, I'm finished with the imaging session for the night and we can upload our files to an online service like Google Drive. After uploading my recordings to Google Drive, I will download the videos and put them on the desktop so we can edit them with the software I showed back in part one. Alright, so now we are in the final stretch of our recording session. I have both the videos here from our Google Drive. Since I already went over most of the steps in part one on how to use all of the software, I'm going to just briefly go over everything we do here. First we are going to do Jupiter, so let's open up our Jupiter folder, put that to the side, then we'll open up PIP, drag the video in there, do planetary settings, and let's do the processing real quick. Alright, so PIP has just finished processing the video, so I'm going to minimize this, open up AutoStacker 3. I will drag that new video right into AutoStacker. Now because we're dealing with quite a small Jupiter compared to the last part, I'm actually going to prefer to just put one alignment point over it. It's a little bit bigger, maybe about 64. There we go. Now usually if we have bigger data to work with, we can put all those alignment points as we showed in the last part, but since we're using small data and we can't really use small alignment points, just one will be fine. Now we are going to use the planet option, analyze it. Now that it is done analyzing, I can see that most of the data is relatively consistent. So I will do about 80% of the frames and let's stack the video. All right, now that AutoStacker is done stacking the video, we can open up Registax. Uh, because we didn't have Registax open in the first place, uh, AutoStacker is not going to send the image automatically to it. So we are going to do the little shortcut we saw last time. Okay, and here is our Jupiter. We can now edit it in Registax. First thing we are going to do is RGB balance. There we go. And since the Jupiter is quite small, I'm going to use the view zoomed feature. There we go. And since we don't have too much data and the capture details weren't the greatest, we're not going to use too much of the sliders here. Let's try slider 3 and see what we get. There we go. That's actually looking quite good. If we bump it up just a little bit more. Yep, that actually looks pretty good. If we were to use too much detail with the sliders, you can see what will happen. We start to get this overexposed look and a blue ring on the outside, so that's not what we want. We're just going to take back this setting. And everything here actually looks pretty good. I'm actually done with the image here on Registex, so I'm just going to resize the image. Let's call it Jupiter 2. And there we go, we're done with Registex for Jupiter. All right, so after we have our Jupiter picture, we're going to go ahead and do Saturn. And I'm just going to speed through this because here we saw how I did Jupiter. Saturn will be relatively the same. I'll meet you back at Registex. Okay, I have just finished stacking the Saturn video with Auto Stacker, And let's check out the finished picture in Registex. Once again, I'm going to do RGB balance first. Then I'm going to do view zoomed. 
And because the Saturn is quite small, I'm only going to do a very minimal about of settings, maybe about two. Because if we were to do too much, yeah, the rings get very overexposed. So this looks about good. Yep, that looks about good. And since Saturn is um, curved in this picture, we want it to be at a more presentable angle. So I'm going to use the flip and rotate feature. By moving this arrow, I get to adjust the image. a little bit more. There we go, that looks good. And now we can close out of this and resize the image. Saturn 2. And we are all done with Saturn. Alright, and finally we're going to do a little bit of editing to these pictures with paint.net. Uh, first will be Jupiter. The colors on Jupiter are a little dim, so we're going to increase the saturation. Not too much, or else, yeah, we'll get a little oversaturated. About, yeah, 145 is okay. And since we have all this empty space around Jupiter, I'm going to crop it to about this size right here. I'm going to copy it, make a new picture, then I just paste it in there, and there we go. We have our Jupiter picture. If I were to just save it again, we can call it. Jupiter 3. And there we go, we are done with Jupiter. And lastly, let's work on Saturn really quick. Since Saturn is quite small, I'm just going to do the cropping part right away so I know what I'm looking at. There we go. And I will zoom in on the image just a little bit. Let's try the saturation real quick. Yeah, so the data we got this time was not the best as the rings have a little bit of a RGB effect. So I'm going to keep the saturation back at zero. But a little trick we can do is if we were to do the ellipse select. Just try to get this on Saturn. It's a little too big. Let's try it one more time. Down. There we go, that's about good. Now we try it again. And there we go, Jup I mean, I'm sorry, not Jupiter. Saturn has a little bit of a better color presentation. The rings are mostly still whitish gray for the most part, which is good. So I'm going to save this picture. Saturn 3. And there we go, we have our final images on the desktop, right here. All right, and now we are at the end of our tutorial for planetary pictures with your telescope and phone camera. I know the images here don't look quite like the same quality that we did in the first part, but like I said, we are using a more beginner-friendly setup that is more realistic to what most people would have. Based on what I was using, I'm actually quite pleased with what we turned up with tonight. And the great thing with astrophotography is that every night you go to do something like this, you're going to improve with knowledge and experience. In the future, I might do a follow-up video where I use better equipment like better eyepieces, a filter, and a better phone camera, but the same telescope. But that is going to wrap it up for the video today. I want to thank you for watching the video and sticking to the end, and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them below, and I will try to answer them as soon as I can. Have a good night.